Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye, when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people, he hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Israelites, when you begin to deconstruct the doctrines taught to you by the spiritual wickedness in high places, you will begin to find the truth in the scriptures. When you begin to unmask the characters in the scriptures, you will soon come to the realization that everything taught to you by the religious leaders in the beast culture are lies. Every tradition passed down to us from the previous generations have been traditions of men. How can the heathens teach you the statutes and commandments of the Most High if they say the laws are done away with? How do they know the statutes and commandments and laws of the Most High if the Most High only gave his statutes and laws to his chosen people, the Israelites? The Israelites are non-existent in the beast system. There is a fraudulent people pretending to be the Israelites in the beast culture. These people are not even called by the Most High's name. The power of the Most High is not with them. The dark powers of this world are their gods, and they have used the dark powers of this world to conspire against you, the people the Most High gave his laws, statutes, and commandments. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Because the Israelites who received the laws and statutes are multiple generations removed from their culture heritage, the synagogue of Satan took advantage of them and replaced their God with idols. The time has come for you to realize, Israelites, that you have been serving strange gods, gods your ancestors have not known, gods who covet the love the Most High has placed on his people and all who serve him in the spirit and in truth. So all the gods and idols that have caused a separation between the Most High and his people, the God of my fathers said to every idol standing between him and his people, let his people go so they can serve him. And the Lord said unto Moses, rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. I am here today to say to the God of this world, Let my people go. Israelites, the time has come for you to dethrone the idols that are standing between you and the Most High. Jesus is not the only idol God that stands between you and the Most High. Jesus is the most beloved and worship of them all. That is why we must continue to unmask Jesus with truth. The stronghold the God of this world have over Israelites and the indigenous black people is a chain that is rooted deep into idolatry and witchcraft. The chain of idolatry has many Israelites and indigenous black people bound for generation after generations. How can the chosen people continue to be bondmen and bondwomen if they are serving the Most High in the spirit and in truth? The reason you're still bound, you're not serving the Most High, the God of our fathers. You serve Jesus, the God of this world, and Black Jesus, the remix. The scriptures have identified many gods the Israelites have forsaken the Most High for. 
Balaam, Malek, Ashtoreth, and many others is still standing between the Most High and his people. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. And they forsook the Lord, and served Baal and Ashtoreth. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and forgot the Lord their God, and served Balaam and the groves. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God, and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served Baal. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire, and used divination and enchantments, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. Israelites, you just heard in the scriptures of the multiple gods that stand between the Most High and his people. In every generation, the Israelites forsake the Most High to serve other gods. The sin of idolatry have been an issue among the Israelites from the beginning. Whenever our people had good leaders, they served the Most High. Whenever an evil leader took the kingship, the Israelites would serve idols. We are living in a generation without leaders. Everyone is doing what they perceive is good in their eyes. This is not the first time Israelites have done what they believe is good in their sight. During the generation of the judges, the Israelites did what they believe is right in their own eyes. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Because this generation of Israelites are in captivity and spread throughout the whole world, the Satans took advantage of our captivity. Majority of Israelites adapted to the customs and traditions of the land they were born in. Because we are a nation that is divided and spread across the world, the commandments, statutes, and laws given to us by the Most High have been lost. The Satans used the workers of iniquity to create various religions that indoctrinated our people to continue in the sin of idolatry. As long as Israelites serve other gods, the synagogue of Satan will continue to rule over them. They will not see the power of the Most High in their life until they return to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Israelites, the scriptures didn't say to worship and serve Jesus in the spirit and in truth. The scripture said the Father, until you return to the Most High, you will never understand the scriptures. Last week, we've read multiple scriptures by two messiahs. One messiah proclaimed you can't get to the Father, but by him only. The other said the Most High have to draw you to him so he can raise you up in the last day. Israelites, how can the Most High draw you to our Deliverer if you don't know the identity of our Deliverer? When the truth is being revealed, the truth is being met with opposition from Israelites. A lot of you are not aware you are programmed to react this way. Many Israelites are aware that in the last days, there will be many doctrines of devils. Most of you are looking out for those doctrines of devils. In the process of you being vigilant, you forgot that the scriptures also said in the last days, knowledge will increase. The Most High will expose everything. What is done in secret will be made known and everything hidden will come to light. But nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Currently, the Most High is revealing the secrets and making everything done in darkness come to light. We are living in the information age. Instead of celebrating the truth, majority of Israelites wants to debate the truth while some Israelites give up because they have allowed the spirit of confusion to overwhelm them. Israelites, confusion is a spirit. The scripture said the Most High is not the author of confusion. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Israelites, when you're confused, you must rebuke the spirit of confusion. Most Israelites do the complete opposite. They rebuke the message and the person who is delivering the message. That is why the spirit of confusion is running rampant in the Israelite community. Some Israelites are not properly dealing with the unclean spirit of confusion. 
Some Israelites are slandering, accusing, and gossiping about the person the Most High is using to reveal truth instead of rebuking the spirit of confusion. Israelites, don't let the Satans use the spirit of confusion to cause you to dismiss truth that is meant to sanctify you. Resist the spirit of confusion and submit to the Most High. Watch how the spirit of confusion will flee from you. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Israelites, you're supposed to deal with unclean spirits attacking you by submitting to the Most High. Resist the devil, and the devil will flee. It's through spiritual warfare you attack unclean spirits. A lot of you don't view confusion as a spirit. Therefore, you blame other people for your confusion. The Satans have a way of making you fight your own people for the problems they cause. A lot of you are perishing for a lack of knowledge because you've allowed the spirit of confusion to steal the good seed planted in you. Israelites, you must recognize a spiritual attack and deal with it accordingly. We have been through this with the Spirit Realm and Spiritual Warfare series. Don't let the Satans steal the vast amount of truth from that series from you. Israelites, deal with the unclean spirit of confusion that is causing you to reject truth. Allow the truth of the Most High's words to sanctify you. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. When the peace of the Most High is with you, you will have a sound mind. With a sound mind, you will be able to discern truth. The spirit of confusion cannot confuse anyone with a sound mind and the peace of the Most High. The synagogue of Satan through religion have replaced our God with idols in the scriptures. Through the very scriptures that are meant to sanctify us is also destroying us with the alterations inserted into the scriptures. Most people believe every word in the Bible. Despite knowing the scriptures in the Bible are altered and missing many books, majority of Israelites believe every word in the Bible. Israelites, the problem is not your belief of the scriptures. The issue is the false interpretation of the scriptures and the false narrative inserted as truth in the scriptures. The workers of iniquity make sure to discredit many books, including the Old Testament, so you won't go looking for the truth. The workers of iniquity said the old covenant of the law is fulfilled with the new covenant of grace to keep you from reading the Old Testament. The heathens have a way of making their doctrine sounds very good and inviting. However, when the Most High begins to reveal truth via his spirit, you will ask questions such as how can an everlasting covenant be fulfilled? And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Everlasting means forever. How can a covenant that is meant to last forever be fulfilled? Also, you're still in the land of your captivity. The Most High still haven't delivered you from the land of your captivity. How did the Most High fulfill the covenant? The everlasting covenant the Most High made with Abraham said, The Most High will be a God to us, and he will give us the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and he will be our God. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. This generation and several generations prior have never seen the promised land. Today, there's a dispute about where the promised land is located. We're in the land of our captivity. How was the covenant fulfilled? Does the Most High have a time limit on how long he will be our God? The doctrine of the old covenant is fulfilled corresponds with the doctrine of the laws are done away with. Jesus, the God of this world, have fulfilled them according to the beast religion. The modern day disciples of Jesus take the scriptures, revise the scriptures to correspond with their own interpretation. Then they spread and enforce their interpretation upon the people until the people accept their version of the scriptures. Remember the Christian crusades? The book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 revealed the Messiah saying he did not come to abolish the laws. If the Messiah said he didn't come to abolish the laws, where did the doctrine of the laws being done away with come from? The scriptures clearly state that the Messiah didn't come to abolish the laws. 
In the same scriptures, the Messiah said he came to fulfill them. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. When the Messiah said he came to fulfill the laws, the Messiah is saying he came to fulfill what is written in the laws concerning him. Nowhere in the scriptures did the Most High said his laws are done away with. How does the Most High hold his people accountable if he doesn't have laws to hold them accountable? Israelites, why must you accept Jesus to be your Lord and Savior if there's no laws holding you accountable to sin? Israelites, do you see the importance of having to deconstruct their doctrines? This is why the people in the church are extremely lawless like their Messiah God. According to the doctrines from Rome, Jesus said he took your sins away. Jesus also proclaimed the laws are done away with because he fulfilled the laws. Nowhere in the scriptures will you find a verse abolishing the laws of the Most High. What you will find is the humbled Messiah saying you will find forgiveness for sin once you repent. Israelites, if there's no laws, how does the Most High hold you accountable? How can Jesus take away the sins of the world when the people don't have laws to convict them of sin? Sin is transgressing the laws of the Most High. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Israelites, can you see how lawless Jesus, the God of this world, is? Jesus' personality and his ways does not correspond with the Most High, the God of our fathers. Today you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The Most High said to you, Jesus, let my people go so they can make a feast to me in the wilderness. And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Peter, in the book of Acts, said to the people, Repent and be baptized in the name of Yahshua for the remission of sin. Nowhere in that scripture did it say your sins was taken away or the Messiah died for your sins. He said, Repent to find forgiveness. The word remission also means forgiveness. Israelites, if you can find forgiveness of sin, there must be laws and statutes created by the Most High to govern the people of the Most High. When the disciples of Satan teach that the laws are done away with, the people will become lawless if there's no laws to correct their behavior. The outcome of the pagan church is a testimony to their lawless doctrines. Every two to three business days, you will hear of a scandal in the church. How can the Israelites follow these doctrines and say they love the Most High? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If ye love me, keep my commandments. When you read the scriptures with the Holy Spirit, you will find scriptures from the humbled Messiah trying to reconcile the people back to the Father. The humbled Messiah was leading the sheep back to the Father. When it comes to Jesus, the God of this world, who was inserted into the scriptures to deceive the masses, as well as to take the identity of the Messiah and the Most High, you will see in the scriptures of Jesus trying to gather the people to him and get the people to worship and serve him. That is why the God in the flesh doctrine is important, because if the people believe he's God, he will get the worship he wants as well as the people's loyalty. Throughout the beast culture and beast religion, majority of the people are worshiping Jesus and will do anything for Jesus. It was important to Lucifer to say to the people, he's the only way. There's a questionable verse in the book of John where John the Baptist said, here is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Last week you saw how Jesus said in the book of John, he is the only way. A few chapters later, we see the real Messiah saying, the most I have to draw you to him. Israelites, you also have to watch out for verses that speaks half truth. A good example to help you understand, there is a verse in the book of Matthew that talks about Jesus using the analogy of drinking his blood. Israelites, the scriptures forbid you to drink blood. The Most High command his people not to spill anyone's blood. 
Yet we have Jesus telling his disciples to drink his blood. The life to all flesh is in the blood. Drinking blood is a satanic ritual. The following verse said his blood was shed to find forgiveness of sin. That part is absolutely true. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. But this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Certain versions of the Bible will word that verse differently. Using the analogy of drinking blood in the scriptures is very satanic, Israelites. The children of the watchers are known to drink blood. The seed of the fallen drink blood when they do certain rituals. The book of Enoch revealed this to be true. And they begin to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof shall ye not eat for it is the life of all flesh the blood of it is for the life thereof therefore i said unto the children of israel ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof whosoever eateth it shall be cut off using the drinking of his blood analogy to establish the new covenant is not of the most high the next verse say the bloodshed was how you find forgiveness of sin. Using the analogy of drinking blood will make the people believe that drinking blood is okay. Also, drinking blood is how they find forgiveness of sin, which is false. Repentance is the proper way to find forgiveness of sin. Israelites, let the Holy Spirit guide you when reading the scriptures. If you notice in the book of John, John said, here is the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. By reading this verse in the scriptures, many people will believe Jesus came to take away the sins of the world. John the Baptist was used as the forerunner before the arrival of the Messiah. John himself said to the people in the book of Matthew to repent for the kingdom is at hand. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. How come John said the lamb took away the sins of the world, then later say repent for the kingdom is at hand? John didn't say to the people except Jesus as your Lord and Savior to be saved. He said repent. In order for sin to occur, one must transgress the laws. But if the laws are fulfilled and done away with, how do one transgress the laws? Remember, sin is transgressing the laws of the Most High. Israelites, you just heard in the book of Matthew of the Messiah saying to the disciples, you will find remission for your sins. The scriptures use words such as remission, reconciliation, appropriation, and atonement in multiple scriptures to describe what shedding the blood of the Messiah does for us. Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. None of those scriptures said Jesus took our sins away. Other words for remission is suspension, forgiveness, or setting aside. Most of us know what reconciliation means. Propitiation means to appease. What some of you don't know and understand about the Most High the Father is that when you transgress his laws, you activate his wrath. His wrath is upon you when you sin. If you don't repent, the wrath of the Most High will destroy you. The Messiah's sacrifice was an offering that appeased the wrath of the Most High. The Messiah's offering didn't take the sin of the world away, but made a way for you and me to find forgiveness for your sins. Most people transgress the laws every day. Some do it unawares. The Most High made a way through the Messiah to forgive us of our sins when we repent. When you sin, you become an enemy to the Most High, regardless if you're an Israelite.
That is why it's important that true repentance occur when you transgress the laws. When you repent, the Messiah's offering gives us the ability to find forgiveness of sin and reconcile us back to the Father. The lawless Messiah said, you have to accept him as your Lord and Savior to benefit from him shedding his blood. Israelites, you learn that the Most High have to draw you to the Messiah. In addition, you learn the Most High gave the Messiah all the righteous. Everyone the Most High gave to the Messiah, he will lose none. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Since the Most High gave the righteous to the Messiah and the Most High the Father have to draw you to the Messiah, why do you need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Why must you go through Jesus if you're already interacting with the Most High the Father? When the Messiah returned, he will return to execute the wrath of the Most High. If Jesus took away the sins of the world, why is the Messiah returning to execute the wrath of the Most High? What the scriptures call the day of the Lord is the wrath of the most high upon his creation for transgressing his laws. Presently, we have religious leaders teaching the laws are done away with. How can you serve the father and ignore his laws, statutes, and commandments? The Messiah said, if you love him, you would keep his commandments. The book of Enoch said the archangels have the ability to write commandments when they see wrongdoing. The Messiah said, if you keep his commandments, you love him and his father. The Messiah went on to say, he will manifest himself to you if you keep his commandments. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. We have over three billion believers who was led to believe the laws are done away with. No wonder they don't know the real Messiah. The Messiah will only manifest himself to the people that keep his commandments. When I tried to tell some Israelites the identity of the real Messiah, they rejected the Prince of Life and made me their enemy. Majority of them accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. By doing this, they made Satan their prince, fulfilling what Dan, the son of Jacob, read in the book of Enoch. Dan went on to say to his children, in the last days, they will depart from the Most High and the Danites will fight against the children of Levi and Judah. Dan said to his children, they will not prevail over Judah and Levi because the angel of the Lord will stand by Levi and Judah. I know that in the last days ye shall depart from the Lord and ye shall provoke Levi unto anger and fight against Judah, but ye shall not prevail against them. For an angel of the Lord shall guide them both, for by them shall Israel stand. Dan didn't say Jesus would stand with Levi and Judah, but the angel of the Lord. Who is the angel of the Lord that would stand for our people, Israelites? How many confirmations do you need to believe the Most High? Who is the great prince that is over our people and spoken of in the book of Daniel? Your prince is the only one that stands in the truth with you. The angel of the Lord that is known as the great prince shall stand for you, just as Dan, the son of Jacob, said. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. By your unbelief, you made the prince of the power of the air your prince, the fallen prince that work in the children of disobedience, the fallen prince that is the God of this world. Many of you know this fallen prince as Jesus. Our ancestors knew the fallen prince as Baal, Malek, and many other names that was given to our greatest adversary, Lucifer. How many times must the Most High say to let my people go so they can worship me? When the Most High command Pharaoh to let his people go, he didn't say, let my people go so they can worship Jesus. He said for his people to worship him. Israelites, the Most High is with you. You don't have to go through anyone to get to the Most High. The word of the Most High said, you are his temple. 
Your body is the temple, the house, the spirit of the most high. He is with you and you don't need to go through anyone to get to him. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. But the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Israelites, if you're the temple of the Most High and His Spirit abide in you, if you're righteous, why must you go through Jesus to get to the Father that lives in you? Remember, the Father is Spirit. He can be everywhere at the same time. Jesus can't. The God of our fathers is with His people. He it is that command His creation to act on His behalf. Israelites, no third party should be standing between you and the Most High. The only thing that separates you from the Most High, the Father, is sin. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Israelites, don't mistake Jesus for the Messiah or the Lamb of the Most High. Also, do not transform Yahshua, who was Michael in the flesh, into Jesus. They are not the same. Jesus is a fallen prince. Joshua ben Joseph, a.k.a. Yahshua, is the holy angel Michael. Jesus is the king of the Jews. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. The Most High don't have a people called Jew or Israeli. If you believe Jew is short for Judah, you're mistaken. Although the word Jew appeared for the first time in the Old Testament in the book of 2 Kings, it's only in the New Testament the entire 12 tribe became Jews. When the Most High changed Jacob's name, he changed his name to Israel. The bloodline of Jacob is called after him and his descendants are Israelites. If you're an Israelite and Jesus is the king of the Jews, you're definitely not the people Jesus came to save. Yahshua, whom Jacob recognized as Shiloh when he was prophesying to his sons on his deathbed, Jacob said the scepter will not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. The lion from the tribe of Judah will conquer. He it is that will stand for us. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Yahshua, who was Michael in the flesh, is known as the lion from the tribe of Judah. Shiloh is not Jewish. Jesus was crucified on a cross. Yahshua was hung on a tree. Israelites know the difference between Yahshua and Jesus. The king of the Jews will succumb to the lion of the tribe of Judah. They fought before and your prince won. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. The dragon was destroyed and was cast down to this earth where you and I live. The dragon and his angels are full of wrath, and they want to destroy all of Adam and Eve's seed. The scripture said, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Satan has come down with great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. In order for Satan to take two thirds with him, he became Jesus, the God of this world. That is worship all over the world, causing the people who accepted him as their Lord and Savior to fall into the great sin of idolatry. The time has come for you to wake up from your slumber and recognize the deception. The Most High said his name is constantly being blasphemed. How is that if majority of the world supposedly worship and serve the God of Israel, yet his name is being blasphemed? Now therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught? They that rule over them make them to howl, saith the Lord. 
and my name continually every day is blasphemed. Israelites, your enemies are very clever. The Satans did exactly what the scripture said they would do in the book of Maccabees. They opened the book of the law and painted their images. The very images many Israelites and indigenous black people worship and admire. They made you feel inferior to the point of hating yourself despite being made in the image of the Most High. The time have come for you to separate from the heathens that seek to destroy you. They have shown you throughout history they want to exterminate you. Serving their gods make it easier for them to destroy you. When you serve idols, you don't have the protection of the Most High. The Father will say to you on the day of your affliction, Go cry to the gods you have chosen and let them deliver you. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Most of you believe Jesus is the Messiah sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus that was taught to you by your oppressors in their religious institutions is not the Messiah the Most High sent. You have been indoctrinated for multiple generations to accept the false Messiah as your Lord and Savior, as well as God in the flesh. Jesus is the deception. The humbled Messiah is real and he stands with you. The humbled Messiah is not the Jesus you believe is God in the flesh. Israelites, you have to make the decision on what to believe. Just don't make the decision alone. Allow the Most High to help you via His Spirit. The real Messiah wants honor from the Most High, the Father. The Most High said His people shouldn't have no other gods before Him. When you worship Jesus as God or the deity you believe to be the Messiah as God in the flesh, you're disobeying the Most High. We should obey the Most High and worship Him only. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Israelites, you cannot serve two masters. The awakening is supposed to guide the remnant back to the Father. We are supposed to be humbling ourselves and repenting, as well as getting to know the Most High, the Father. Regardless if you believe you know the Father, a lot of you don't know the Father. You know Jesus and Black Jesus. The Most High is not either one. The time has come for you to get to know the Most High. Don't let the idols of the heathens stand between you and the Most High. Seek the Most High with all of your heart. You will find him if you look for him. Don't follow the broad road that leads to destruction. Let your spiritual journey be a personal relationship with the Father. If you have the Father, you have everything. For the Most High gave Adam and Eve dominion. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? But thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Without the Father, you will perish. The remnant in this generation must wake up from their slumber and return to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth. The hour have come and now is. Israelites, tell the modern day pharaohs to let you go so you can worship the Most High. Remove the idols that occupy the Most High's place in your heart. Israelites, give the Most High an opportunity to show himself strong through you. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof.